Mathematics Lesson 42. Topic. Financial Mathematics 2. Turn to Lesson 42 in the Learner's Workbook. This lesson includes an individual activity, a pair activity, with a formative assessment and a summative assessment. Integration. This lesson integrates with maths literacy, life orientation and general banking knowledge. Prior knowledge. Grade 10, a knowledge of simple interest and compound interest. Lesson overview. In this lesson you will learn about different compounding periods, learn about nominal and effective interest rates. Hi guys, uh, welcome to the second financial maths lesson. Um, in the series, we, we're really excited. I hope you enjoyed the first one. You know, simple and compound interest, um, reducing balance, linear depreciation, very, very important concepts. Today, we're gonna really, really have a wonderful time with two important grade 11 topics. And um, these things are extremely important. Yes, my name is Velo. It's another lesson, another good, uh, it's, it's another good learning experience. I hope we're going to have a great, uh, great time together. So now let us start having a look at the learning outcomes and the assessment standard of the lesson that you're going to do. It will be a learning outcome one, where it's a number and the number relationships. And the assessment standard for you, you have to demonstrate an understanding of a different periods of compounding, growth and decay. That's include effective compounding, growth and decay and include effective and the nominal interest rate. Now let's have a look at the lesson overview. What are we going to do? We're going to look at the different compounding periods, the nominal rates, and the effective rate. Watch out of the difference between the two rates, which is the nominal rate and the effective rate. If there is a difference between them, you have to be careful because it is a tiny difference. Looking at the different compounding periods, we'll just quickly look at the annual rate. Look here, the annual rate, different compounding periods, the annually, it's once per year. And now we have a half yearly, which is happening twice a year. That means every six months you have an interest. Quarterly, that's four times per year. That will be every single three months. Very important people, um, you need to understand, if you're talking of quarterly, okay, it's four times in the year, that doesn't mean every four months, okay, it's every single three months um, per year. So that's three months, three months, three months, three months, making up, of course, your... That's a, that's a very year. important note you've just made there. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. Now, the monthly, that means we know that there are 12 months in one year. That means you're getting an interest 12 times a year. Daily, 365 times per year, excluding leap years. Um, who knows what a leap year is? A leap year, of course, is when you talk of the 29th of February. That's that extra day in the year. Sometimes happens, but most times we will just use 365. Okay, let's look at some examples relating to these different compounding periods. Let's look at the example one. It says calculate the future value of an investment of 10,000 after three years at an interest rate of 18% per annum compounded annually. Now, if you look at the timeline, you can draw the timeline because it helps you to clarify the situation. That means from T0 to T1, that's one year. So let's have a look at the example. So if you, you have a look at the example, as you know the formula that we were doing in the first lesson, so that will be a 10,000 open at the bracket is one plus the decimal that you've been emphasizing, which is 0 0.18 in this case, or to the power of three because it's three years, and it gives you this amount, which is 16,430 rand 32 cent. Okay, let's look at the example again. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at it half yearly. Half yearly, guys, every six months. That's twice in the year. They also call it semi-annual. Okay, watch out for those words. Semi-annual, half yearly, pretty much the same. Okay, let's, let's look at this. If you go half yearly, now you'll notice something here very, very importantly. You've got the 18% per annum. Okay, now look at this per year. This means that you've got to divide by two because it happens every six months. 
one half here, one half here. Now, 0, 118 divided by 2 gives you 0, 0, 9. So that happens twice in the year. Remember, 18 divided by 2. Now, you, you of course, have got three years. Now, that would then, of course, give you logically, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. See there? Now, let's look at the calculation quickly. Again, very, very important, 10,000. 18% is a decimal divided by 2 to the power of 6. That's 6 half years. Very, very important. Rest is really, really nothing in this one. And you simply then work out the calculation. And you probably see you're getting more money. Isn't that interesting? A lot more money here. So it seems that the more times in the year that you compound, the richer you're going to be. It's so I think yeah, sure. yeah, we're going we're gonna to invest a lot more. Maybe we should go, imagine investing every minute. What a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on. Let's have a look at that example actually, where now we are, we're doing it quarterly. Remember, we said the more you get the, the interest in the year, the more you get the money at the end of the year. So now let, let's have a look at the quarterly. How many times are you getting an interest? Four times a year because we have the first quarter that's each and every three months of the year so you get an interest of 0 0.045 so we divide the 0 0.1 by 4 because you're getting an interest how many times four times that means each three months we get an interest of 0 0.045 let's look at uh, the example done you could say that in the bracket you have 0 0.18 divided by 4 why are we dividing by 4 because we're getting an interest four times a year. But in how many years? Actually, in three years, that would be 12, okay? So there we have an amount that we get to, as you can see. Let's have a look at it if we go monthly quickly. Let's go and have a look here. The timeline, notice, very important, you've got the year, total year there. But guess what, we're doing it 12 times per year. That means January, February, March, April, May. So it goes on. 18% as a decimal divided by 12 gives you then the 0, 0, 0.015 interest rate per month. And notice if you do it for three years, 12, 24, 36. Nothing in it. Very, very important. Here we go. Calculation. Again, it's compound interest. Money is growing. 18% divided by 12. You're dividing into 12 parts and then obviously 36 times over three years. And then the calculation is very, very, very cool.